hit like, subscribe and the notification bell to help the channel grow. Right, so this episode starts right where we left off in the aftermath of the hijacker Stewart shooting a passenger. At this point, we still don't know who the victim is. However, we do know that Sam is safe, at least for now. He's being held at gunpoint by Terry in the galley of the plane. The rest of the passengers are in a state of panic, trying to wrap their heads around the fact that one of them was just murdered in cold blood. We get our first glimpse of the passenger who was shot as they're shoving her into the airplane storage area in the middle of the plane. After a little bit of IMDB sleuthing, I figured out the passenger's name is Sheena, played by actress Liz Kingsman. Lewis confronts Stewart about their no-one-dies policy. Stewart replies, they were out of control, and if it wasn't this time, there would just be a next time. And then Stewart says something that really piqued my interest. But don't you try it, Carl. Remember? Edgar and John, so we do as we're told, exactly as we're told, yeah? Two shady-looking dudes in a van call Marsha to confirm Sam's address from a picture taken of his passport sent to them by the hijackers on the plane. Marsha tries to explain that Sam doesn't live there anymore, thinking it's just a delivery service. However, by the time she hangs up, the damage is done. This is the first instance where we see that the hijackers have a larger group beyond those on the plane. By the way, these two are credited as Cleaner Joe and Cleaner Maz. We see Sam zip tied to the wall in the galley as a flight attendant tries to bandage Lewis's wounds. Lewis is unaware of the fact that he was stabbed until Sam brings it to his attention. Sam manages to convince Lewis to let the flight attendant cut him loose from the wall to help with the first aid by making him think no one else is around to help. As we learned earlier, Sam is a skilled negotiator, and he cleverly employs his tactics on Lewis, manipulating him through mind games in order to make Lewis lower his defenses and start revealing information. The situation becomes more complicated as Romania threatens military action against the plane unless they receive more information about the current situation. Just as the foreign secretary is shown a radar image of two unidentified, most likely military planes next to the aircraft, we see two jets flanking the hijacked plane. Whether it's the blood loss or the fact that he's clearly becoming more comfortable with Sam. Despite his deteriorating condition, Lewis continues to share more information as he begins to bleed out, confirming that someone else is in charge that isn't on the plane. The pilot of one of the military jets observing the airplane witnesses a flight attendant being attacked by an individual armed with a weapon. As the flight attendant risks her life to signal for assistance, the captain of the hijacked airplane, utilizing a children's geography book to plot the plane's trajectory, becomes aware that they have entered Romanian airspace. Concerned for their safety, the captain realizes that urgent communication with the military jets is crucial to avoid being shot down. The captain successfully establishes contact with Stewart, one of the hijackers, but Stewart dismisses the need to engage with the jets, believing that a British plane wouldn't be targeted, as it could potentially lead to a war. Tragically, during Stewart's earlier outburst following the shooting of a passenger, he damaged the captain's headset leaving the pilot unable to communicate with the Romanian pilot and address the impending danger. Sam, realizing the urgency of Lewis's medical condition, urges Terry to find any available medication and locate a doctor. As Lewis's condition worsens, Sam tries to distract him by engaging in conversation about their respective family members. During the conversation, Lewis reveals that his mother's name is Elaine and he has a picture of her on his phone. Sam, showing a slight hesitation, reaches out to grab Lewis's phone with the intention of viewing the picture of his mother. It becomes evident that Sam is torn between genuinely assisting Lewis and utilizing the situation to communicate a message to the outside world. Meanwhile, Terry pleads with the passengers for help in obtaining medication for Lewis's injuries. Sam notices that his phone is connected to the plane's Wi-Fi and skillfully leaves a message for his wife, providing Lewis's mother's phone number and indicating his hands are tied. This maneuver is executed smoothly, showcasing Sam's resourcefulness. Marcia informs Daniel about Sam's message, and he promptly takes action by sharing the voicemail with his superiors. The authorities discover that the five hijackers are all British nationals with ties to organized crime. As Sam was browsing through Lewis's phone, a contact labeled Adam with the description French mob catches his attention. The crucial information arrives just in time for the foreign secretary to intervene and persuade the Romanian military against shooting down the plane. Abort! Abort! Disengage! Copy that. We have 
Weapons cold. Returning to base. When the doctor finally sees that Lewis is unconscious and not breathing, with blood filling his lungs, the doctor determines that an emergency procedure called a thoracostomy is necessary. Unfortunately, lacking proper surgical instruments, they have no choice but to improvise using the tube of a pen to create a makeshift chest tube. However, as the doctor prepares for the procedure, hesitation sets in. Sensing the urgency, Sam takes matters into his own hands and forcefully inserts the pen tube directly into Lewis's chest. After a tense few seconds, Lewis begins to breathe again, indicating that the improvised procedure was successful in restoring his breathing. As Marcia gets home, she's heard calling out for her son Kai, who does not seem to be home. The uncertainty lingers whether he has been taken by the cleaners or if he simply hasn't returned yet. Meanwhile, the cleaners may be inside, ready to take Marcia. The episode ends with the home secretary getting a sealed folder labeled Demands. And after a few screenshots and some magnification this is what it reads. FAO, the Home Secretary and members of the UK government to whom it may concern. On the 7th of January 2023, Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown were wrongfully imprisoned, as a direct result of this flight KA29, time and details listed below has been hijacked. This is your opportunity to right that wrong. You have the time it takes for the plane to reach London to release these men from prison. Failure to do so. Comply with any subsequent instructions, or influence the progress of the plane, will result in the death of all 216 people on board. Flight number KA29. Destination, London Heathrow. Departure time 9.12 am. Okay this is where I leave things to you. How influential are these hijackers considering one of their people was able to walk right up to the home secretary? Do you think the hijackers already have Sam's son and if so do you think they will use him as leverage? And finally do you think Lewis will be more forthcoming with Sam now that he technically saved his life?